I'm just binding a watercolor sketchbook here. I'm going to try to bind this book while I chat. I have a standing desk and it's really great because it's nice and big and I like the freedom of moving around but it is um, it is exhausting after a while because I'm I feel like I'm working my upper body a bit when I'm binding and then um, uh, combined with the standing, I feel um, exhausted at the end of the day or even like mid-afternoon I need to um, either take a break or I feel I just feel like my energy gets low after a bit, after a few hours of bookbinding. Yesterday uh, I felt pretty tired early in the afternoon so I took a two-hour break to finish watching Never Have I Ever. And it's such a sweet show. I loved how it was done and I have so much respect for Mindy Kaling. Um, I've been watching The Office as well. Um, I'm on season eight. Yeah, I think I'm on season eight now. And just seeing the beginnings of Mindy's career and then just watching her uh, recent show that she's created yeah she's just super cool in my eyes i love that she was a writer and ep on um the office as well that's incredible i was really sad when michael scott left i didn't think that he would actually leave the show i was really surprised the show definitely is not the same without michael scott i really appreciate it when sometimes i'm just going about my daily life and I think of an office line or an office scene um, and I have a good chuckle to myself. Um, so when I was talking about the standing desk thing, it, it reminded me of Dwight who stacked like three, uh, three desks together like a pyramid and he tried not to sit the whole day to show how awesome standing was and then <laughs> and then after that he um I don't know what he did but he like made his own chair that would hide within his pant legs and then um Jim came by noticed what he was doing and just tipped him over do y'all want to know what else I'm watching and what else are you watching? Elliot and I just finished Loki on Disney Plus. Yeah, we we loved it. It was very, I thought it was very creative. Um, every time I want to unsubscribe to Disney Plus, Marvel comes out with a new show or a new movie. Um, and I just have a love-hate relationship with Disney Plus. So I've been thinking about why people would care about my books and how I would connect with people through my art and my books. Um, and I, I just thought really deeply as to what kind of impact my books can make. And 
I had so many doubts when I was choosing to do Bitter Melon Bindery full time. Um, and this was earlier this year. I used to do nonprofit work and now, um, now switching to art, I felt really selfish. I felt like what kind of impact would this make? What kind of difference would my books make compared to um, nonprofit work and social services, which is what I was doing? Um, and my, I vocalized this to my friends um, and they shared something that I will um, just always remember when I'm feeling doubtful. And they shared, they shared that um, they've used my books for really special purposes, um, like language learning, like um, writing gratitudes every day. Another friend shared that in their journal, um, they used it a lot while they were um, trying to heal and process um, a really difficult time in their lives. It feels so special to me to hear those stories. It makes me feel like what I'm doing has importance and has meaning. Even though there are so many other journal brands and, and books they can buy, I have a lot of curiosity in terms of, you know, the what these books will hold? Will they be memories? Will they be reflections? Will they be um, sketches and art practices? And, um, and I love the idea that our journals and our sketchbooks accompany us on, um, on certain journeys, like um, whether it be a creative or writing or healing journey. This reminds me of um, a video that I watched recently by G Supi or G Su, who is an artist based in Australia and um, they're so sweet. I love who they are and they've been creating really meaningful little comics and art on Instagram. And they recently did a, um, a 30 day sketchbook challenge. And the reflections that they shared um, in that video was really profound. She ended up being really honest and playful in her sketchbook, which helped her and encouraged her to work in her sketchbook um, more consistently. It became like uh, a moment of self-care and it became a moment of, you know, providing herself the affirmations that she needed, which is beautiful. I love that stuff. And I love seeing people's transformations through creativity, through art making, through a commitment to themselves and to their growth. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about the idea of um, thinking about and talking more about creative growth within Bitter Melon Bindery, whether that be here on YouTube or on my social media platforms. I wanna find ways to infuse that value into my bookbinding as well. A common thing that I hear is that these books are too beautiful to use or too beautiful to write in. I want to affirm people that you are creative and these pages don't have to look beautiful. I also want to share more about my own creative journey. I just haven't always nurtured my creativity and I feel like that's just non-negotiable now. Being creative for me has been really healing 
mental health wise, but also gives me confidence. It gives me a sense of play. It gives me a sense of purpose. Thinking deeper about like what I can share and what I can give through my craft and bookbinding, I get more and more excited about um, creating content and making more books and making more designs. Now I am being more intentional about why I'm doing this and it's becoming clearer and clearer to me. I'm just sewing on the cover of this book and I'll show it to you in a second. It's Thursday. I just had a late lunch. Earlier today I was at the dentist um, getting a root canal done, so I'm glad that's over with. I was dealing with some pain in the last couple days. Um, I just have a few more orders to do um, so I can ship it out tomorrow, and my plan is to focus on doing admin stuff tomorrow. I just tried this new Pocky flavor, new to me at least, um, and it is so good. It's delicious. One of my favorites probably, and it's that thicker kind where the, um, the cookie and the icing is a bit thicker. It's Choco Mint, so um, if you can find it where you are, I highly recommend trying this. I also like the Mango Souffle flavor and... What's that um, soybean paste called? No, it's not a paste, it's a powder. Kinako, kinako flavor. I also wanna talk about Breath of the Wild 
Are there any Breath of the Wild fans here watching this? I got my Switch for Animal Crossing when Animal Crossing came out. And then I bought Breath of the Wild and um, my partner and I have been playing it ever since. He's actually um, doing a second playthrough and I just like watching him. Um, and so we're stoked about the second one coming out. Um, and I finally looked up all the cutscenes for Hyrule Warriors. Because Nintendo was like, this is the only chance you can see what happened 100 years ago when the calamity took place. Um, I've been meaning to look up the cutscenes. I tried the demo of the game and just didn't like the style. Um, I don't really like just battling, so didn't end up buying it. But um, someone uploaded two and a half hours of the cutscenes on YouTube and I watched it like a movie and it's just incredible. I'm like so emotionally invested in the story. Um, definitely got emotional at some parts and some of the um, Zelda parts um, reminded me of some Sailor Moon scenes where she's like lit up with the white light and, and her, her white outfit and all of that too. I can't believe how good video games are now and I'm so glad that I can play video games as an adult. It's like li reliving my childhood without parental <laughs> restrictions. My desk is pretty messy. I'm gonna clean it up now, um, wrap up some orders and probably call it a day.